Hey, and welcome to another episode of Living in 64116, where we introduce you to the businesses and organizations just north of the river and the role they play in making the Northland such a cool place to live and work and play and raise a family. Today, we're back in North Kansas City. We're going to visit with Mike Shannon, the owner of Restless Spirits, and learn about this cool place. Mike, thanks for having us out. Thanks for being here. Very fun place. Yeah, glad you so, like it. So uh, what are we drinking, first of all? You said something new. This is a new whiskey. Uh, I wouldn't say it's new. It's a two-year aged single malt. It's actually a straight single malt whiskey that Benet has just got of age for us to be able to harvest, and we've been enjoying it around the distillery to see what people think of it. Who's Benet? That's our distiller, my uh -huh. wife, and uh, she's the master distiller here at Restless Spirit. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so I, when I walked in, I noticed a couple of things. One, trains are everywhere. What's that about? <laughs> So when my family first came from Ireland, uh, when the, uh, the expansion of the U.S. westward, right? You liking that? Yeah, yeah. Be careful, okay, it's good. 115 proof. <laughs> so uh, the westward expansion, railroad was a big part of that. You had the Transcontinental Railroad, uh, needed a lot of Irish labor to build that. And uh, my great-great-grandfather was part of that. I see. And so you'll see a lot of railroad imagery in what we do. I get it. You, uh, I saw some more imagery. There's a rabbit, it seems, that pops up every now and then. Yeah, a rabbit on every bottle. Uh, and that has to do with some Kansas City political gang warfare sort of imagery. Oh, really? In Kansas City. So Tom Pendergast, I'm sure everybody knows who that sure. is, uh, was the mob boss mayor of Kansas City for the longest time. And he had a political rival whose name was Joe Shannon. Not a relative. But okay. He controlled an area of town known as Shannonville that my family did live in. And uh, so in that space, they had these gang warfare mascots and the faction that were the Pendergast tribe were known as the goats and the Shannons were known as the rabbits. The rabbits. So we decided to honor the rabbits through all of our bottles and there's a rabbit on every bottle. Nice, that's it. a very cool thing. Yeah. Um, Restless Spirits, where did that come from? Just the name. Ah, Restless Spirits. So that really was kind of a point in time for Banana. Uh, we had gotten our kids through school, college was paid for, uh, we were kind of stale in our careers, tired, needed something different, we were kind of restless, All right. and so we just thought restless spirits kind of, kind of filled, the, filled the void. Alright, and so how did you get into distilling? Uh, that's a long journey, probably longer than you want to talk about here, but the short version of that is uh, my best friend, uh, who's also a partner in the business, who lives in Colorado, we were stumbled into a bar on the 16th Street Mall, uh -huh. and someone introduced us to uh, Stranahan's Colorado Whiskey, was just emerging at the time, All right. found it to be of interest, and followed that rabbit all the way to where we are now. <laughs> and But it sounds like it's Benet that does the the stuff. Yeah, we have a sort of a separation of powers in this company. So she's uh, she's the distiller. She does everything on the inside of the bottle uh -huh. and branding, marketing, distribution, uh, business management. That's all I outside see. of the bottle. I, I got it. Yeah. Well, let's real quick talk about where we're at. I know we're in Northtown, but where exactly? We're at 18th and Burlington. Uh, and we are um, just to the, I guess that's the east of Chicken and Pickle. And why, what was this before? And how did you find this place? Uh, this actually was empty, vacant building. Uh, at the time we got into it, it was originally, I believe, the 7-Up bottling plant. And uh, so it was a lot of space at a very fair price. And so we, uh, right. we took the opportunity to jump in here before right. kind of what you see happening in North Kansas City, okay. happened, which is exciting. All right, enough background. Let's talk about the whiskey. Yeah, so uh, what did you start with? What are you doing now? What are you doing next? So all of our whiskeys, uh, you'll see, and we do some importing of whiskey. We do, uh, we produce our own on site. What you're drinking here is 100% made in this building. This is a, uh, it's all barley based whiskey, which means we use barley as our grain. We use 100% malted barley in the grain bill. Uh, so it's similar to what you would see in the grain bills of Irish whiskeys in Ireland. And what you see behind us here with the pot stills, uh, that's what you would see in Ireland as well. It's okay. true pot still distilling. All right. So uh, one thing that my wife and I did recently was we joined your bottling team. Oh, fun. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you so could So we came, that. I forget what night it was. Was it a Wednesday night? Yeah, what, Wednesday nights, Tuesday, Tuesday nights. Tuesday night. Tuesday nights. So we came here. They, you, you fed us pizza. We did that, yeah. You fed us pizza. And then we went back and there was just a glass bottle in a box. Yeah. And, and, a, and a big giant, uh, you know, uh, tub of whiskey, yeah. not tub, what's it called? Tank, I guess, yeah, tank of whiskey. Tank. We had a tank of whiskey. And we got to do everything. We got to take it from the tank into the bottle and put labels on the bottle. Oh, clean the bottle? Clean it, yep. Which was easy. It's not like I was cleaning bottles. It was rinsing it with uh, vodka, if I remember That's correctly. Right. Yeah. 
So how often does that happen and what's the deal? We do that a couple times a week. Um, all of our bottling is done by hand so far in the growth of our company. We don't have automated processes yet. So uh, we're fortunate to have a stream of volunteers uh, who like to come and participate in that. And like you said, we, we bring them in, we try to make it fun. Uh, they meet new people. Uh, we feed them a little pizza halfway through the night. It's about a three hour, four hour shift, depending on eh, three hours, six to nine is usually how we do it. Yeah. Uh, halfway through we do and the pizza. And it went pizza. by like that. It's fast. Three hours and is then, gone. And then at the end of the night, Everybody gets a bottle of whatever we're bottling. That's for. right. I, le I and I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and you just handed me this bottle that we right. had packaged. In fact, we got to do it ourselves. We just stick all the bottles on. Yeah. Stick all the all the labels on. Thus, we have a lot of repeat offenders. Uh, I can imagine. Uh, that's the best three hours I ever spent. Pizza, and we each got a bottle, so we went home with two bottles of whiskey. That's right. It's yeah. fantastic. It's awesome. So uh, anybody can do that. They just register on your website. You go to the bottling something or another. Go ahead. Anybody over twenty-one. Can anybody over twenty-one. Yeah. And they go to the website, and there's a place that you can go to register. You can go register, register online. Uh, it's a waiting list. We do have a pretty significant wait. So. Okay, so list uh, list your whiskeys that you currently have uh, for sale. or. I would say, uh, first, we have our imported line, which is Sons of Aaron. We have a uh, four-year uh, Irish whiskey called Sons of Aaron. Then we have a 15-year single malt of that same brand. Uh, that Both of those we import from Ireland. The 15-year single malt was just rated one of the top 100 spirits in the world by... Uh, uh, wine enthusiast magazine okay so we're pretty excited about that we got that recognition at the end of the year we have stonebreaker which is a blend of irish whiskey with an Amer american malt that we make in this building all right and then we have gully town which is our 100 uh, percent made double barrel aged uh, whiskey uh, which gully town is named actually after kansas city it was the original nickname if you will sort of a derogatory term for kansas city all right and uh, so we decided to make it cool. And turn it <laughs> <laughs> you said you import uh, Sons of Aaron, mm -hmm. but it, it, it but we bottled that. Right, correct. So I import it. We bring it in in bulk, and then we rebarrel that whiskey in freshly emptied Breckenridge bourbon barrels. Uh, it rests in there for anywhere from three to six months before we barrel or uh, bottle it. Okay. And uh, and then uh, yeah, then it goes to market. Besides coming here, I assume you can come here and buy a bottle of your whiskey. Correct. Uh, what are some bars around that actually stock your spot? Oh your, my gosh! Your... Of course, Chicken and Pickles, one of our bigger customers um, in the Northland. I would say um, Trezo, Mario. Trezo, yeah. Yeah, they do a super job for us up there. Mike Lee and his crew. Um, Rock Hill Grill downtown is a is a place to find our. Right. Experience. So you're kind of so getting it out popping there. Popping up there everywhere. Yeah. And then uh, I assume that you're elsewhere. Yeah. Other cities and yeah, we're we're now in uh, eleven states total. Uh, we're we were selected as the official gin of the Boston Red Sox, so that uh, that is kicking off this year. Will be served at Fenway Park. Excellent. And uh, so it's been a good year for us. But yeah, we're in. I would go through all eleven states, but I think I'd get mixed up. Yeah, yeah. There. That sounds like a story in itself. Maybe yeah. I'll follow yeah, up with that sometime. So, yeah. Hey, well, listen. Thanks for having us out. Thank you. Very fun. very cool. Nice it. place. I'm excited that you're in Northam. Come back anytime. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Living in 64116. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed this video, please give me the little red heart and comment on it. Most importantly, share it so more people can learn about restless spirits in North Kansas City. And uh, we'll see you next week. Jazz musician, so we improvise. Just oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be great then. And then I met in music school. She was an oboe player, and I played uh, saxophones. What's an oboe? Is that it's the a is double that... reed instrument? It's about like this long. It's thick snake music, snake charmer music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. That's very well, what's the big giant one? This that you blow into a little bitty tube, but it's a big giant thing. It's, uh, it's that, a reed instrument. That would be either, okay. probably a bassoon. Yeah. Bassoon. All right. I Which that we was the affectionately oboe. call the burping bedpost. <laughs> <laughs>